Hey hey, Marcus House with you here. Lots of updates this week, so I thought I'd quickly touch on a few topics today. Firstly, we'll explore some updates and news around Starhopper and Starship prototypes. We're going to take a little peek at some of the most beautiful footage I think I've ever seen of the Dragon docked to the space station with a sunrise going on in the background. Uh, we've had a final United Launch Alliance flight of the Delta IV medium rocket, which is a little sad, so we'll touch on that. And uh, also, a little bit of exciting news that dropped this week about a brand new version of the game Kerbal Space Program 2, which has been announced. So, loads of things to cover here. Firstly, Starhopper. Now, if you're anything like me, you were hoping to have seen by now news of Starhopper's 200 meter flight, which was penciled in over the last week. Sadly, it does seem that there have been some delays caused by the Federal Aviation Administration that is stopping Starhopper from taking this next flight. Understandably, they just want to ensure that they've evaluated any risks of the flight more carefully before allowing it to launch again. So, over the week there were several road closures that did seem to indicate that Starhopper may fly during the week, but by Thursday the closures had been cancelled, uh, ruling out the flight entirely. So no flight during this last week as we were hoping, however uh, you will be happy to know that the FAA has posted a new airspace closure for the area around the SpaceX test facility in Boca Chica, Texas starting on Monday the 26th through to late Wednesday the 28th. There isn't as yet as far as I've seen any official word on permissions to fly beyond the 25 meter mark that SpaceX previously did over a month ago now, so no green light to fly the next 200 meter hop. Uh, so anyway, hopefully the official thumbs up will be given very soon and with any luck the 200 meter flight will have been completed over this next upcoming week. Uh, there's also a lot of activity going on with the Starship prototypes, but all the same, we were hoping to have had Elon Musk's planned Starship presentation done and dusted, I guess, by now. So we still don't know a great deal about the new design changes that have been hinted at now for quite a while. The last time we heard anything about Starship uh, was from Elon on Twitter when he mentioned that uh, the presentation is now not going to happen until the Starship Mark I one has three Raptors, moving body fins and landing gear installed, which is hopefully mid-September. Now, we certainly seem to be suffering from some Elon time here with everything going on. Back a month or so ago, Elon had tweeted that the Starship presentation would happen on August 24th. Starship is moving forward though because we have seen some pretty awesome shots from the Boca Chica version of the Starship. Just take a look here at how much height has been added to this over the last few weeks. When they combine both the tops and bottoms of the Starship prototypes, it's just going to be huge. They've now installed major fuel tank bulkheads and based on a few other photos taken this week, it looks like we can see here the new thrust plates that will have three Raptor engines mounted to it. I mean, how cool is this? Interestingly, it looks like there has been an almost identical plate going in for both Starship prototypes. This one here at Boca Chica and then this one here at the Starship in Florida. Seems to me like the race between both vessels is pretty much neck and neck. So along with this, there have been some shots at Boca Chica of what we're all thinking is um, a Starship landing leg. Now because we're still awaiting on Elon's Starship presentation, I don't feel like we know quite enough about how all this is going to fit together, but I'm assuming from the shot in this photo, the leg will potentially be an aerodynamic control surface still. So you know, really looking forward to hearing some more official uh, information on this anyway. While we are still talking SpaceX, I just thought I'd drop a sample of this beautiful footage of the Dragon at the space station. Here I've captured a fairly low quality version of this and quite drastically sped the footage up. So please do go and follow the link in the description to check out the original 8K video footage played at the correct speed. Uh, now I shouldn't really say video footage as this is not real time video. This video in particular is made up from photos taken by astronauts aboard the International Space Station and it's showing the Dragon capsule as it's birthed to the ISS. 
they've done a lot of interpolation to create the illusion of this smooth movement here and they've said exactly this in the description of the linked video. This is essentially why we can see some strangeness at the start of the video with reflections of the camera operator's hands blurring in together uh, about one minute into the video. And uh, regardless of this, the video is truly one of the most beautiful videos I've seen in quite a long time. It really is breathtaking. So yeah, go and check that out. In other space news, a few days ago on August 22nd, we saw the very last United Launch Alliance Delta IV medium rocket launch. This was its 29th and final flight from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, and the payload on this flight was US Air Force's GPS-3 satellite by Lockheed Martin. Now, as far as I've read, this satellite offers three times greater accuracy, so with all the new versions of the network's technology just keeps getting better and better. As always, some nice footage here of the launch. Um, everything went perfectly, and around uh, two, after, uh, two hours after the launch, the Air Force and Lockheed Martin engineers announced that they had control of the GPS-3 vehicle after it separated from the rocket booster. The satellite then used its own engines to climb up towards its target orbit around 20,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. In gaming news, we had a surprise announcement during the week with a trailer for Kerbal Space Program 2 dropping out of the blue. KSP2 looks like it's going to be launched in spring of 2020 on PC and then afterwards for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, I've read that it's going to be offered on Steam, so that's a great thing. Uh, one surprising part of this announcement was that it was not being developed by Squad, who made the original Kerbal Space Program game. This time around, the new version is being built from the ground up by Star Theory Games. Of course, as soon as the trailer dropped, there were some very excited reviews of the trailer by The Shadow Zone and Scott Manley. I won't bother touching on anything much that they've already covered, so you know you can go and check out their videos for more details on the specifics there, but a few little things I thought that I would touch on were released in an article on the Video Games Chronicle website, who did seem to get a few interesting little answers out of the developers. Now, a few questions were asked specifically around higher part counts and frame rates because, as anyone knows that has played the original Kerbal Space Program, performance can, let's say it can be a little problematic as soon as you have a vessel with any more than a few hundred parts. In the new KSP2, the developers claim to have put a lot of thought into optimizing the way that they're calculating the rigid body physics. Now, with some of the pre-alpha footage, we're already starting to see the quality and the frame rates appear to be looking a little, perhaps ordinary, but the developers have already emphasized that the footage is taken in an, in an early pre-release and they're confident that they've gotten many of the performance aspects clearly in their sights to target. Um, the question was asked though whether it will perform a lot better to the original, to which they simply replied, yes, it will be way better. Um, the big changes to this next version of the game are essentially going to include the addition of multiplayer support that we've never seen before, um, interstellar travel, which everyone is super excited about. There's going to be much more to do on planets and moons, and uh, a huge number of parts are going to be added that have never been seen before in the original stock Kerbal Space program. So hopefully we're going to see a lot more awesome footage of KSP2 coming out. Uh, for me personally, I would, uh, you know, I wouldn't have this channel without Kerbal Space Program. It's the reason why I got into making content in the first place. And the developers, as far as I've seen from the footage, um, they do appear to take this responsibility very seriously. And if they can make it as successful as the original game and improve on this, it's just going to be awesome. So there you go, a big week of news there. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out a lot. And it lets me know that I'm making content that you love. If you have any comments or questions, please do drop them down in the comments below. Today in the tile in the bottom left, we have the video from the other week where we talk about SpaceX's crazy plan to land on the moon within two years. Now there's a lot of skeptics and perhaps rightly so. It's going to be really interesting to see how all of this plays out with Starship 
over the next few months in particular. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.